there are some tools that you're going to need to make this pattern other than your loom, loom tool, and your pattern book, which I'm basically doing the same pattern that's in this book. I've just, I'm switching collars. If you want to make it a convertible hat like I did and not just a cow, then you might want something to make a pom-pom with. There's lots of different options. I just like the Clover pom-pom makers. Of course, you'll need your loom tool. You'll need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors and your yarn of choice. The two collars that I picked out were the tweed stripes in Caribbean. and marble. So I've already got the ends pulled out. We'll start with the Caribbean. If I can find my end here. Here it is. I'm doing a chain cast one, but since this loom doesn't have an anchor peg, that's usually what I use to reference my first peg that I'm using. I just have a little rubber band. There you go. A little tiny rubber band. I'm just going to put that on a peg. doesn't really matter. Any peg. And I'm going to get started with my cast on. Now you can do a chain cast on, e-wrap cast on, whatever you want. I, and I, am, I typically prefer a chain cast on, but I'm going to use an e-wrap cast on. Which all you do is I'm kind of holding the tail here. I'm just going to go around and e-wrap every peg all the way around the loom. And then when I get back to this peg, I'll push all these down and e-wrap all the pegs again. If you're unfamiliar with the e-wrap, the yarn goes behind the peg and wraps around the front. Go to the next behind the peg, wraps around the front. Each peg is wrapped twice. Now what I'm going to do is this last peg I wrapped, I'm gonna go ahead and take my loom tool and take that bottom loop over the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the first one too. Now the first one, this is just loose. So you just pull it and kind of tighten up that string. From here you just take, take your bottom loops over the top loops and push the stitches down all the way around and then your cast on is done and we will start with our three-step stitch. Got our cast on done. Now we're going to go over how to do the three-step stitch. Now the three-step stitch, it's a very repetitive stitch, but once I show you how to do it, you do the exact same thing the whole time. So you're gonna hold the yarn in front of your peg one where your marker is knit off. Let's take the bottom loop over the top. Then you're going to take and hold it over two pegs. Take bottom over the top, bottom over the top. That is step two of the three step stitch. Then we're going to hold it over three pegs. Which of course this is step three of the three step stitch. Our yarn is now on peg three. So what we do you go back one peg and wrap around the front and knit off. Then you do your step two. Then you wrap around the three and that is your step three. I'll show you one more time. Each time you're going to be moving up one peg for that first wrap. It'll be backwards from the peg the yarn is coming from. And you always do it the same. Take the working yarn, put it behind the peg and around the front, and then around two, and then around three. So work in a circle until you have done two rows. Then we're going to switch to our gray collar and I will show you how to do that. All right, this is what it looks like. 
you have a couple rows done. Now, this row isn't actually completely done. I did, wait for it to zoom in, there we go. I did a three step stitch and the last one put me right before my first peg here, but you don't go by the last stitch of your three step stitch, you go by the first stitch. So we go back one, you can see I'm still like two away. I'll go ahead and do this one. And seeing it's hitting that first stitch now and the way this is working up it's kind of this is kind of going let me zoom out we cast on and then you start your three steps your three step stitch and it's basically coiling so when we switch collars it won't be exact on the back you can see but kind of twist as it goes so they're not all down in one straight line and it's not it won't be that bad okay we have one more three step stitch to do then we can change our collars but we need to have enough yarn to do this let me show you okay so what you want to do is just kind of like mock wrap for your three step stitch your one then your two then your three. So that's about how much yarn we're going to use. It'll be a little more, probably about this much, but we need a tail to weave in. So just like a hand length more. We're going to cut that off. Now we need to join this yarn with this yarn. You can just tie a knot, you can do whatever you want. I prefer a Russian join, and for that, I'm going to use the tapestry needle that came with it. It looks like it's going to be big enough to put the yarn through. Yes. So again, we need to know where that last stitch is going to be. And they won't all turn out perfect. And that is fine. The one, the two, and the three. So this is about where that collar change is going to happen. What we're gonna do is you gotta cross. Let me zoom in for this. This is the working yarn. This right here, I'm just keeping a hold of it, is where we want our collar change to be. So we got our tapestry needle. Let me switch hands, I'm lefty. We got our tapestry needle on here and we've got the new yarn crossed over. So actually what we're gonna do here is Actually, you kind of untwist the yarn, which this is just a two ply. And you just wrap the yarn. You kind of untwist it to where you can basically run the needle down through the middle of it. Uh, the more plies it has, the easier it is to do this. Because you want to make sure, see how it's coiling around want to make sure because sometimes if you're not uh, paying attention you can do it to where it is it'll just pull right out of it doesn't want to stay is what I'm trying to say okay so I've got I'm gonna get a good bit on there you know an inch or two at least and I, I don't want a huge tail here so that's fine Make sure your yarn is still crossed here. Once you get a bunch of, of yarn on there, you pull your tapestry needle through and off. Now see there's a big loop here. So I'm actually tightening that up. Before I tighten it too much, I'm going to double check again. Oops, sorry double checked again and it's a little I need to make it a little longer so once you get that on there and you got this yarn going through and we'll still do the other side too but you can actually adjust your final length here there we go there we go. I guess I could have zoomed back out for that. So, adjusted the final length. Now all of this is kind of woven in. 
So with that, you can actually cut your string off right at the base there. And now we have this other side to do. And you want to make sure you get both strands through. Now with this, you just need a little tiny tail. And you get going. Just run it through a stitch. You just want to make sure it is coiling around the tapestry needle. Which what I do is I kind of untwist it a bit and pick up I'm going to do a bit more because you want this to, uh, ideally you want the tail of the yarn to be up in this like coil so that it's not sticking out. See that's a good bit. So we're going to pull, pull this through. I need to pull it up just a little bit and there we go so I got it almost there's just a little tiny bit here that I can cut off all right my scissors need sharpen there we go so now we've got this very strong almost seamless join when we are done so we've got this old collar we got one more three step stitch to do and if you don't get it just right and your collar changes in the middle of your three step stitch here see mine's right at the end that new collar is going to be on that last peg that's fine because it doesn't really match up exact on this back side anyway see like this little tail I can just cut that off completely flat and it's not going to get in the way See, because there'll be a little tiny bit sticking up from that too. But as it wear, it the Russian join just seems to wear very, very good. And honestly, this right here, that's all there is to this project. I will zoom out and show you uh, this finished one here. So we did two rows of the one collar, two rows one two rows one two rows then I reverse it the collar that had one row I do two rows so two rows one row two rows one row two rows and then do my cast off which when it comes to the cast off time I'll show you how to do it but go ahead and make the rest of the body up um, you can use whatever join you want to join the new yarn I just prefer the Russian join it, when you have stuff that looks lacy like this, your ends are a lot harder to hide. As you can see, this right here at the beginning, I wasn't doing my Russian join and there's little edges sticking out everywhere. But then when I get up to the end, if I can find where... Let me find it. Here it is. You can see it's not lined up quite right. But you can see I did my Russian joins there and you don't see any little bits of yarn sticking out because when I got done I stretched it really good just in every direction and then went through and snipped off all the little pieces of yarn sticking out. Alright, get it up to the cast off spot and I'll show you how to cast okay, off. Okay, so we have it as long as we need it to be. Now the yarn I did use was self-striping yarn and uh, the collar change isn't as noticeable as it is with this one obviously because they're both solid collars that are very very different but this yarn was just so pretty I I had to use it now I do want to show you where your collar changes were because I'd mentioned they don't line up exact they kind of end up going like this the fabric the way it works it kind of twists on itself a bit but it gives such a nice look. It's so lacy and pretty and it almost has a crocheted look to it. But this is just a really nice stitch. Now for cast off, we are going to do a super stretchy cast off or bind off, whatever you want to call it. What you do, you take your working yarn and wrap it around the loom. 
along the outside of it three times and then you cut. All that does is give you enough yarn to work the cast off. Now your yarn should be coming from peg two. Let me zoom in for this. Your yarn should be coming from peg two, which, you know, if you're doing another row, you'd be going back, wrapping peg one, and then wrapping peg one and two. What we're gonna do is peg one, peg two, peg three. We are going to put the yarn in front, skip peg three, which we're just skipping one peg, pull the yarn up through the stitch on that peg. And then we're going to go backwards one stitch to peg three here, and you have two strands in front of it now. You're going to take your loom tool and pull your working yarn here down through that peg, or through the stitches on that peg. From here, again, you skip one, go up, go back one, go down. So we're at peg three, we're skipping peg four, bring the yarn Oops, I'm bringing the yarn up through peg five. And we're going to go backwards one to peg four and pull the yarn down. So we're at one, two, three, we're at peg four. Skip peg five. You go up peg six, down peg seven. And you just continue this pattern until you get all the way around the loom. I'm back at my first peg and I'd already... I was here and I skipped, went up, went back, went down. So here's where I am. Now, this wasn't the peg I started with. I started with peg two. So I'm actually going to work peg two and then work peg three again. So this right here will be my last one because I want to end with the yarn coming from the peg that I started with. So here I am. Now I can zoom back out. Now we just pop it off the loom. And if you want to keep it and use it just as a cow, you're done. But if you'd like to use it as a convertible cow that can be turned into the messy bun hat or just a regular, just fun toboggan that you can uh, tie the top off, then you want to wait around And you want to make a couple palms and your chain. Now the chain I made, all I did was I got, I held together both strands of yarn. And get them even. I, you want to leave a good bit of tail because we're actually going to use this to tie the pom-poms to. And then what you do, I got my tail here, you twist it, you pull the working yarn through. You've just created a slip knot. Now you can do this any way you want. You can braid it, you can do anything. Uh, this for me, I just like the texture of it. So see, I've got my slip knot and the working yarn is slipping, not my tail here. So I take my hand pull the working yarn through. You're just creating a crochet chain is what this is. Now if you do crochet and you find it easier to use a crochet hook to do this, then by all means, uh, go ahead. Now you want to make this long enough to where it'll go all the way around this and then have, I'd say at least that much left over on each side. I'll get you a measurement in a moment. You just do this until it's as long as you need it. If you're doing the cord, when you go to do it, there are different ways you can do it. You can put it on your head and kind of guess where you need to tighten it up at. Um, but what I like to do is because you can actually take, fold this in half like this and use it as an ear warmer. And if I'm going to use it as an ear warmer, I want that string to be in the middle, which I like the blue side better. But 
I'll probably wear this as a hat more than an ear warmer. So I want the blue on the bottom and more the gray on the top. But you can pick however you want to do it. So if I fold this in half and okay, so we got one, two, three. Okay, so we'll say four rows down. And here is my cast, oh, get it in the picture. Here's my cast one, here's my cast off. I'm gonna have them as even, have it folded as even as I can because there's about the same amount of room on both sides of each. Um, the stitch does cause the fabric to kind of twist some. That's why our joins go like this too. This is going to be the back of the hat, back of the cow, however you're wearing it. This will be the back. So that's why I want it to be centered. And then as far as the front, I'm just going to eyeball it. We'll say this is my middle spot. One, two, three, four. I've got my cord hooked to the tapestry needle. And what I'm going to do is just start going in and out of the stitches like this. You can do every one, you can do every other one. Um, I found doing every other one, it wants to uh, call it pucker more. Uh, it's really the best way, I don't know how else to explain it, when you're tightening it. Okay, so we got it going. Now there is something I want to show you because watch where the collar joins because you want to drop down a row. And I will show you why. Let me see. I'll get to it. It's right up here. Okay. If I keep following this the way it goes, you see at this point... I no longer have the gray above. I go to where the blue line is above me. And when I get over here, my end cord is going to be up here. So what I do is at some point, anywhere you can do this, but I'll actually jump down a row. And the only reason, the reason it does that is because of the way the stitch is, it's basically a big coil. Which, if I did this right, I should meet up. Alright, there we go. We can take that off. Kind of stretch it out. Now we can do the pom-poms on it. And now I do have one. You can use any size pom-pom maker that you want. Um... I'm using sorry, uh, the green, the blue, like when you buy the sets, the blue is the largest typically. I'm using that second size down. I already did the one side here, and what I do is I do a palm in one color and then the other one in the opposite, whatever my secondary color is. But the way you use these, and most of your craft stores sell these, uh, there's other ways to make palms if you want, pom poms, whatever they call them. You just kind of hold your tail here, and then you just start wrapping. These are so simple to make. They're really fun to do crafts with the kids and stuff, too. You just wrap this until it is full. Now, if you got a yarn that is changing, that's uh, this one changes color pretty slow. Um, the other one changed color pretty fast. But you can take and like wrap just one little side if your collar changes like real quick and then you'll have it kind of striped. It's a fun thing to play around with and figure out exactly how you like it best. Now I didn't do anything special with these. I'm just wrapping them. But I wrap it. The more you wrap it, the fuller it's going to be. Which I wrap it until that little crescent shape here is almost gone. And then you just close it. I take my scissors. I cut it here. Because when I 
cut the rest, I'm gonna hold this tail down and just cut right through it. Now, all you do Make sure you have sharp scissors. You would not believe how fast yarn will dull your scissors too. So having a nice uh, sharpener for your scissors is very helpful. Okay, see? Now I'll do this one since it has the different colors so you can see. Now what I'm going to do I've got my two strings coming off of my cord here. I wrap them in that little slot. Take tie a knot. You want to get it really tight, but you don't want to break the yarn. And you could tie this in there any way you want until you feel it is very, very secure. Uh, this is going to be my daughter's, and it's going to get a lot of use. So I'm like double triple knotting it all right and then when you're done you just cut these to about the same as the rest and we take you open that up pop this open and there you go it is all that's your palm go ahead and make your second and tie it on all right so our convertible cows or whatever you want to call them, are completely done. There are a couple things I did want to go over, just a couple little tips and tricks that hopefully might help you. Um, the bag that your loom comes in, keep it. It's great for storing your loom, but if you're working on the go, you can take the pegs off the loom, put your yarn in the bag, and fit your peg, your loom down in the bag as well to carry. Or I will put this down in my purse to keep the yarn separated from everything else in my purse. That way it doesn't become a big, like, nasty mess. Now, I made this cow, and these are 114 yards each. There's enough yarn here to make a second one if I wanted to. So if you wanted to do just one solid collar and you wanted to use the tweed stripes, one, sp one uh, skein will work. And that should even leave you with enough to do the little palms if you want to. Um, something else, I did use two different yarn here, two different types of yarn here. This one right here is done with Caron Simply Soft. And just, I'm not even sure what the name of the colors is. But it's just Caron Simply Soft. With Caron Simply Soft, Caron Simply Soft is marketed as a worsted weight yarn. But in all reality, it's more like a light worsted. Um, it's a little thinner. If you look at it compared to a lot of your other worsted weight yarn that you see in just your everyday craft store, you're going to notice it is a little thinner. So what that did is that gave, it has a lot more what they call drape to it. So it's very baggy and floppy. And this one is really good. It has a, a floppy hat look to it. Um... And if you're using this one, if you're wearing it as a cow, you might want to wear, you might want to kind of tie these and wear them with these at the bottom because I noticed wearing them at the top with the care on, it just weighed the whole thing down and you missed a lot of the texture. Uh, but it's super cute, very lightweight, very airy. Now here, this is the line brand Tweed Stripes, and this is a number five. I'm just double checking. Yes, a number five bulky weight yarn. And even for bulky weight, this really isn't that bad. I'd say it's like a light bulky. Uh, but what this does, just being a little thicker, which I will show you the strands. So you can see the size difference. This is a number four, a worsted weight. And this is a number five, just a bulky, not a super bulky, but a regular bulky. So with the bulky weight yarn, the difference you get is it still is very lacy looking, but the material itself is a lot thicker. Um, it holds up better and it almost stands up by itself. Um, so with this one, It'll be a little more stiff around your neck or as a hat. I think I would prefer this one as a hat and maybe this one as a neck warmer. I'm not really sure. 
but there are different ways you can wear these which I mean you've seen but I'll show you exactly how you do it if you take fold it in half there you got an ear warmer which is an ear warmer there may not even be depending on how large your head is uh, there might not even be enough yarn here left over to tie but you can twist them around and it'll still be really cute you can take and wear it just as a neck warmer or you can take and pull the string tight on the top which I suggest if you're going to pull it tight uh, pull it and tie it first and put it on uh, if you're going to use it as a messy bun hat pull it to where it's almost completely closed then put it on pull your hair through and then tie it and you have a little bow and you've got the puff balls hanging off and it's just super cute so it's a very versatile uh, project. Okay guys, really that's all I have for you. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below or you can email me. My email is in the description below. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I truly hope you do enjoy this and have a nice day and don't forget to subscribe.